all of you wonderful creative people here on YouTube. My name is Ria and I welcome you to my artsy corner. Today we're gonna have a little chat about my favorite art supplies for the year of 2022. So let's get right to it, shall we? mentioned it already that when it comes to coloring I still feel like I'm a tiny little baby sprout I've just started to actively color about a year ago in March 2023 I'll turn one <laughs> so I'm very 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 excited about that but not those uh, 10 or 11 months as of yet, I have already discovered that uh, some of the art supplies that I use in my colorings I like more than I do others. And uh, today I would like to share with you some of the art supplies I tend to mostly gravitate towards when I'm coloring and to show you some of my favorites. Uh, some of those I have just discovered this year, uh, which was pretty exciting. So yeah, let's get right to it, shall we? For the very beginning, I have chosen an art supply that to most of you is, well, pretty essential, I guess. But to me, it was quite a discovery because, well, to put it simply, I've known about alcohol markers years and years before I even started coloring. I mean, uh, my friends were raving about them, <laughs> always. But I myself, being more of a pencil person, I never dared to try them out. So, uh, I haven't up until uh, last year. And I finally got them and uh, decided to start using them. And wow, it felt dope. <laughs> I mean, I love them. I, I love how easy it is to work with them. I love the way they color with no streaks. Well, if you know how to properly use them, how quick they dry, how evenly they lay on paper, and how easy it is to finish a page for literally within hours, if not minutes. So the first, the one of the very first ones I got were these cheap knock-off markers from Aliexpress. Well, these are... Uh, oh, well, yeah, this name just cracks me out. Touch, youch, youch. <laughs> or, well, whatever the touch they decide to name them. All the touch news, touch cools, touch... Well, well, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. The knock-offs of uh, Shinhan's touch markers, I, I believe that is what they are. Well, I must say that, well, these are no good at all. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, uh, their only plus is probably that they're ridiculously cheap. I think you can get a set of 80 for about 19 euros or 19 dollars or so. The colors are very bright, very vibrant. Well, this bigger set had more pastel colors in it too, but the problem is their quality. See, I mean, come on, really? These ends here are literally falling off. Almost every time I open the marker, uh, it just splashes the ink all over my uh, fingers. They do not smell all that bad, that's a plus, but well, okay, let's start with the, the tips maybe. These have a chisel tip and a very broad bullet nib on the other end, as you can see, uh, which makes it quite difficult to get into tiny spaces, especially knowing the fact that these bleed like crazy. Especially when you work on create space paper. I mean, you just tap the paper with the very tip of your marker and it bleeds all over. You have to be very, very, very careful with these. And from what I know, their brush markers are even worse. 
Yes, <laughs> these monstrosities have a brush version too, but I, I, I've never dared to try it out, especially after I heard so many negative reviews on them. So uh, now that I have them, I mean, I'm going to use them up, but I mainly use them on color by number books or mm, like books like circulism books, stone mosaic books, you can use them there as well, or anything anywhere basically that has a black background and you don't have to worry about these going outside the lines you know for quick and easy coloring and uh, once i'm done using these i will definitely not repurchase them again what i want to get once i'm done with these is a proper set of ohuhus well here i have my pastel set that comes with a broad tip on one end and brushed it on the other. These are the markers I really, really, really love. Like I said, I have only the pastel colors, but my friend has a set of 120, well, their usual colors. Uh, every time I come to visit, we use those markers to color. And hers are the broad and bullet tips, but Hopefully in the future I will get the brush ones. These are cheap, they're good quality and they keep on improving and I'm really looking forward to what they're going to do in the future with uh, their markers. I mean, those have certainly become one of my um, most favorite alcohol markers to use. I mean, I, I have some of the pro markers in my collection. I have the style file brush tipped ones that I really, really like, but somehow, uh, I tend to gravitate towards these more, maybe because their brush is a tiny bit harder and easier to control. I don't know, all in all, these feel really nice to work with and are definitely one of my most favorite alcohol markers I have ever used. Well, speaking of Oruru's, I would like to mention their water-based markers as well. These are their dual tip brush markers that I tend to use a lot also, especially in my mandala books and my color by numbers. Well, their only problem is that they have very little pastel and light colors in their set, but uh, to fix this problem, I've purchased their new Nihao set that I've showed in one of my previous videos, which is mostly made out of pastel and lighter colors so that takes care of this problem i mean i have these since 2020 and they're still nice and juicy and working really fine so these are probably my favorite water-based pens or markers or whatever you call them to work with now i would like to share some of the art supplies that I'm using for doing backgrounds to make my work quick and easy. One of the first things I have discovered last year were the soft pastels and how quick and easy and simple it is to do background with them as long as you know how to seal them properly because those can smudge. Here I have a um, sampler set of Jackson's brand that I got in Jackson's Art online store. So uh, here you have 48 half sticks of the colors that they have in their range to try out. I, I got this box on one of their Black Friday sales. And believe it or not, back then it cost me about four pounds, I think. And uh, for someone who only uses uh, soft pastels for doing backgrounds, this is a ridiculous amount of pigment. Well, some of them I have already used quite a lot. You see, it's scratched off. Well, what I usually do is I uh, crumble them down with a knife and then just rub the powder in either with my finger or the blending stump. Depends on 
the delicacy and uh, detailness of the background. Okay, I'm trying to sound smart here. Anyway, you got the point. I mean, those blend really nicely. The colors are really bright. Uh, I also got a set of Koi Noir soft pastels from my friend. She just gave them away to me because she's not using them. And those I like a lot as well. They're even softer than these ones. And are really pleasure to work with. I also like the colors. So yeah, soft pastels is one of my two-go mediums when it comes to making backgrounds. And lately I have the discovered these, the gel crayons. This is one of the sets that I have. So you know, it's your typical lipstick-like crayon, you know, that you can either put directly on the paper and smudge it with your finger, you can use them with water brushes uh, because they're water soluble. You can put them on the palette and then pick them up with a brush and rub them in. You know, there are a lot of ways you can use these and they're just as quick and just as easy to use as the soft pastels are and they make beautiful soft backgrounds. Oh, your pages is really, really, really good. And the best thing about this, you don't have to seal these. Let's talk about embellishments, shall we? Of course, the first thing I would like to share with you now, uh, uh, not the cookies. <laughs> this is the 10 part of the cookies. Now I keep my stickles and other glitter glues in. I have a whole variety of them in here. Um, these are the... Uh, Giotto ones, you know, the, the, the kids glitter glue, but I've used it on my pages. It works just as fine. I think, I think the glitter is a bit chunkier than the stickles and those dry a bit more glossy, I think. I have this shine, the, the glue shine, you know, in the spots where you put them on, but of course the stickles are amazing. Ever since I tried them out, I can't get enough, but mostly I gravitate towards these translucent ones that just have different iridescent glitter in them, you know, just to put on uh, some of the parts on my pages, you know, to add some pizzazz to them. I have especially used this one, I guess. Yeah, that's the diamond one. Love it. So yeah, stickles were a very pleasant and a nice discovery to me. I also have a bottle of glossy accents that I have not tried out yet, but I think it's gonna be just as awesome. So next thing I simply love using on my pages live in this oh humongous case here. These are my gel pens. I have the shuttle art ones, uh, the 180 of them. Here in this set you have a whole bunch of metallics, you have your glitter ones, you have your glossy ones, the chalk pastel -y ones. Although a lot of people tend to say that they don't like these gel pads, but I do. Uh, I don't know, I, I found them being very creamy, very soft to work with. They flow really nicely. Well, none of them in particular have been stopping for me or clogging up. I don't know. Um, I've been using these since summer last year and I'm really, really pleased with them. Well, maybe these ones, the pastel ones, are a tiny bit harder to handle because they do feel a bit chalky and when you lay them down at the very beginning they do not look as opaque but once they dry the color becomes brighter the same goes for neons i believe so yeah it's really not a problem of a gel pen <laughs> you just have to wait a little for them to dry to for the colors to brighten up so yeah i'm really really glad i got this set especially with all the refills that it comes uh, with yeah, these are going to last me a while. And another set of gel pens that I have in here are my dual metallic ones. These I just love. 
I mean, they sparkle so brightly. I mean, they shine just as much as the stickles do. <laughs> I believe these are by far the shiniest, the most pigmented gel pens, well, the glitter gel pens that I've ever come across. And I love them. They have a lot of ink in them. Uh, you can clearly see that these are filled really nicely. Although I have used this one already for quite a while and there's still so much of it left. I think it was filled up to here, if I'm not mistaken. Well, other colors from this particular set live in my travel case. Those appear to be just repeats of this special edition set that I have in here. So I really, really love them. And the effect of um, double pigments that they have. I mean, they come in one color and then glow in the other. They're iridescent, I suppose, or how you should call it. Also, th really, those are one of my favorite gel pens to use. And they just add this little oomph to your pages. So, last but not least, I know I have mentioned it a bunch of times already. I am mainly a pencil person. So, my next favorites that I'm about to show you, of course, are going to be color pencils. But before we do that, I would like to share some essentials with you that I always have beside me on coloring. Well, since I'm working with pencils mostly, of course, I can't go without erasers. And I especially love these tiny ones. Here you have um, the last remains of my I think this was a Koinor one. I got it last year and been using it ever since I've started coloring and <laughs> this is just how much it's been loved. <laughs> uh, soon it's going to turn into a tiny little stump, but I use it constantly. And in my travel case, I keep this Tombow Mono Zero one. I also have refills for it. What I like about these is that you can get into uh, any kind of tiny little spaces, you know, to correct some mistakes that you made or if you went outside the lines, it's easy to remove. These erasers are pretty soft. They do not scratch the paper. They do not smudge your pencils. Uh, it's a really real pleasure to work with them. And of course, the blenders. Uh, I have one of these in each of my pencil case. Uh, mostly uh, the ones I'm using are the Derwent one. It's a really, really nice blender. It works with nearly all of my pencils that I have in my collection. I have no problems with using this one. It blends the colors really, really well. And the other one, which is even cheaper, but works just as well, is of course this Coin War one. I got a set of 10 or 12 of these, 12 maybe, in one box for 10 euros. I mean, it's a bargain. And trust me, they work really, really well. Nearly just as well as the Derwent one. Okay, let's get to the chase and jump straight to the pencils. That's what we came here for, right? My first discovery of the year would probably be uh, the Prisma color pencils. I mean, uh, I got them back in 2021 as a Christmas present for myself <laughs> because, well, once again, it was Black Friday. They were on a really good deal back then. And I decided just, you know, to bite the bullet and get these because I love colored pencils. And from what I know now, I love more waxy and softer cord ones uh, than um, the harder pencils, although those have their own use as well. I do not mind having them in my collection and using them for detailing, for example. Uh, but yeah, I'm more of a softer pencil person. And once I've tried these out, I'm going to love them. Although there are, they are a bit harder to get in here. I've already have spotted some places where you can get these open stocks. So I guess from now on, I'll be using them a lot less sparsely than I have used 
them before because I was afraid of them running out. I really like their color range. I love the way they blend. I love everything about these pencils. <laughs> and um, I have literally no problems with using these. I joined the Prisma Color Club. Those are one of my most favorite pencils from now on. On the topic of being on the budget and trying to save money, uh, Artex pencils. It's a very nice choice. Well, they're not as soft as Prismacolors, but they're definitely more on the waxier side. I got the set of 72 pencils to try them out first, but once they came out with 126, I got that one as well because, well, I really have grown to love these pencils once I've properly tested them out in my coloring pages. Uh, I'm going to use them a lot more. I love the colors, uh, I love the way they blend, I love the way they sharpen. They keep a uh, sharper end um, longer than Prismas do because these are not as buttery, but they're really nice to work with. But the only perk about these pencils <laughs> that I really, really hate is this ridiculously small silver writing. It's so difficult to read, oh my gosh, especially for me since I... I do have problems with my eyesight, but aside from that, this is a very lovely alternative. If you are on a tinier budget and if you're keen on saving money even more, there is no pencil that I personally could recommend more than these here. Uh, this case houses my collection of boot funner pencils. And the square ones are definitely my favorites. They were ridiculously cheap. They are really nice and soft. The colors are very vibrant and bright. This set has a really nice array of colors, as you can see. Anyway, there's nothing bad I can actually say about these pencils, except the fact that because of their shape, they can be hard to sharpen. But I simply use the sharpener with a slightly wider hole, <laughs> so to speak. And well, they sharpen no problem. Uh, also, I have my set of macarons in here. And together, these sets work beautifully. I also have their uh, pastel set of 80 in here, which are more like a bright neon set more than a pastel one, but I do like these fleshy kind of tones that they have in this set. Anyway, I've tried these pencils out on a lot of different coloring books and in all of them, they seem to work pretty nicely, even on CreateSpace paper, <laughs> believe it or not. In between those three sets, all of them blend together really well. Again, I'm going to repeat myself. Uh, these are more of um, waxier pencils. Do not believe what they say on the box. Oily does not mean oil. Uh, oily means that they are not water soluble. And yes, these aren't because brute funners have their separate line of watercolor pencils. So usually when the budget pencil box says oily colored pencils, that means they are not water soluble, but they are not oil pencils. And brute funners definitely are more on the waxier side because like I said, they are softer, they're creamier, they lay down really smoothly. I love the colors. I love the price and uh, once I run out of most of these colors I am definitely going to get another set because I love them that much. <laughs> I mean now that I have a few more sets in my collection these aren't getting used all that often simply because I'm curious to try other pencils out as well but I find myself constantly coming back to these, uh, especially well, books like Hannah Carlson's books, like <laughs> even Create Space books. They work really nicely on smoother paper as well. The Japanese books take them really nicely. I mean, so far I have not found a single book that these 
did not work on, believe it or not. Uh, I have worked in several books in my nearly one year of experience from now and I can definitely vouch for that. So colored pencils, the Brooklyner ones are definitely one of my most favorite coloring art supplies of 2022 and uh, I can definitely recommend these. Well then, here we are. You have seen a tiny little portion of my coloring supply collection, well, namely those I really, really enjoy a lot and I work constantly with. Uh, this year, well, one of my goals this year was to try out even more new media that I have uh, at my disposal that are still waiting to be pulled into the light of day. Well, you know, it all comes with time. <laughs> I'm already making some progress because these silky crayons, like I mentioned, were a novelty to me just a short while ago and I've grown to love them. So who knows, I might make even more discoveries this year. I'm already looking forward to it and I'm definitely going to share them with you in some of my future videos on this channel. So before I say my goodbyes, I would like to welcome all of my new subscribers that I know I got quite a few lately. Welcome, welcome. I hope you will like it in here and you will choose to stay. Well then, that will be it for today. I will see you in one of my next videos. Until I do, please remember to stay creative, to stay artsy and enjoy yourself in every single step you take. Until next time we meet, I'm down.